So a couple of months ago I fitted an FPU to this Amiga 1200. Now while this machine does have an accelerator in its trapdoor, and it's got the Terrible Fire TF1230, that card doesn't have space for an FPU. Rather what we did was install a socket on the Amiga's motherboard and populate that with the Motorola 68882 chip. Now despite the fact that the accelerator was running at 54 megahertz, with the FPU on the Amiga's motherboard, well that would only be running at 14 megahertz. Now we were able to double that to 28 by picking up a clock signal elsewhere on the Amiga's motherboard. And I even tried to take it right up to the 54 megahertz by borrowing a clock signal from the accelerator. That though didn't really work. Taking that 54 megahertz clock, well, the FPU does run, but it runs rather slow. In fact, if we take a quick look in the AIBB benchmark utility, you can see that it correctly identifies the CPU clock at 54 megahertz, but it sees the FPU clock at 22.3. In fact, if I run the F math test, floating point math test, well, that is sort of confirmed here, isn't it? Because if you compare our performance here against the performance of an A3000 running at 25 megahertz, well, you can see that it is just marginally faster in its floating point score. That sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Because we're running at 22.3. That is a 40 megahertz part though that we fitted the FPU, 40 megahertz chip. And while it does work as it is, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not really happy with how we left it. So we're gonna come back to it again today. And what I want to do is install this somewhere in the case. This is a 40 megahertz crystal. And the idea being that this will give us our 40 megahertz clock that we need to run that FPU at its rated 40 megahertz. So once more into the guts of this Amiga 1200. There's the accelerator, the TF1230, and this wire coming across here to the FPU. Well, that was my attempt at picking up the clock signal from this. That's where it's connected off there. So it'll just be a matter of disconnecting that. Pulling this wire back and installing this crystal. So my plan is to stick that sort of in there like that, just set it beside the FPU, mounted on a bit of double-sided sticky tape. As it is currently installed here, with its four pins, well pin one is this one here in the bottom right corner. That is actually not used on these oscillators. This next pin along here though, pin seven, as it's called, if I pull up the data sheet, well that is ground. So all we need to do is cut this wire, say cut it back here somewhere. The black core of it, well that is a ground, make that off there. The pin directly facing that, pin 8, well that is the output, so we'll take our blue wire and connect it to that. But this thing needs to be powered, it is a 5 volt part, so we need to find 5 volts around here somewhere and run it to that other pin. If we take a look on the Amiga PCB Explorer, well it's at that point there that we picked up the ground. And the other side of that capacitor, well... That just happens to be VCC, so we need to run a wire from the other side of that cap up to that pin. Probably wouldn't do any harm to put a bit of decoupling across the VCC and ground on the oscillator itself. And so for that, I'll just use one of these 100 NF caps. This should be relatively straightforward. Let's just get stuck in. So if we're going to do this, we're going to need to cut this wire. And I just want to leave plenty of length on it for now. So we've got ground, we've got clock signal. Let's use a bit of red 
for the VCC. So I'll just add a bit of uh, solder to the other side of that capacitor. And see about getting our wire connected. Granted that wire is probably a bit heavy for what we're doing here, but it'll be fine. In fact, I wanted to stick this down, didn't I? So, a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. Let's just do that. And it is just going to be a little bit of tape. It's just to stop this rattling about in the case, potentially shorting anything out. And that's gonna sit like that. Now, that first pin of it is not used, so let's just remove that. And these other pins need to be carefully connected. I need to be careful with this that I do not break the pin of the FPU itself. There is a bit of hot glue on there holding that, but it's not great, to be honest. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Before I do anything else, I'm gonna put a bit of fresh hot glue around that just to help hold it. In fact, you know, while I'm waiting for that to heat up, we could sort out these wires, couldn't we? You know what? See that red wire? That red wire is crap. The solder isn't really flowing onto it. Let's just use something else. There's a slightly better looking bit of red wire. Right, that's one done anyway. Our hot glue is up to temperature. So before I do anything else, I just want to put a nice blob of hot glue around this. Just to make sure that that leg is held nice and secure there with that blue wire attached to it. So black wire has to go to here. And the blue wire has to go up to that. Right, that's us almost ready to test it. The only other thing I wanted to do was to put decoupling capacitor between VCC and ground. In fact, would that even be necessary? Because I have connected it to VCC and ground, either side of that capacitor, which is probably a decoupling capacitor for the CPU there. Let's just test this as it is. Right, let's see if it works. So we're getting the video signal, bit of activity out of the floppy drive, and it certainly seems as if it is booting. So let's jump into our benchmark, and let's see what speed it says our FPU is running at. There we are. CPU clock 54 megahertz, and FPU clock 40 megahertz. So it seems as if this has worked. Let's put it to the test though. We need to change this up here to CP math and we'll just change the A3001 to CP math as well. So that will be our comparison. And let's run that F math test again. This time then you can see that our performance is a fair bit higher than that of the 25 megahertz A3000. And the reason that I'm using this as a comparison is because the A3000 would have a 25 megahertz 030 CPU with the 68882 FPU. So yeah, it certainly seems as if our little crystal is working. Again, after running this test, the flops test, you can see that our performance here is again higher than that of the 25 megahertz A3000. We can draw the beach ball. Which may not look that impressive, but comparing it to the performance of a stock Amiga 1200, um, we are quite a bit faster than that. Of course, while this may look impressive, nice big red bar there, making it the whole way up to 68, or almost anyway. If I was to turn on that 
which shows you the performance of the 68040 processor and its inbuilt FPU. Well, you can see that that absolutely dwarfs the performance that we're getting. What about in sysinfo? So yeah, there's our M flop speed now up to 0 0.88. And it too is confirming the FPU is there along with the processor, but it incorrectly detects the processor clock as 60.5 megahertz. We know it's running at 54. So one FPU up to its fully rated 40 megahertz. What does that mean though for this Amiga 1200? Well, ultimately it means very little to be honest with you, because other than giving us that figure in the benchmark suite, there isn't a lot of other FPU stuff that we can run on this machine. We can run the Chaos Pro program. This creates a fractal on the screen, a fractal image. So I think that's finished. And while it has produced this nice picture, it's not exactly full screen, is it? And it maybe took it, what, five minutes still to do that. So yes, it will do it faster now that the FPU is up to its full 40 megahertz but it still takes its sweet time. Pretty much the only demo that we can run on this system, whether it's fast 030 and now the FPU is Jesus Christ Motocross. There are plenty of other demos that require an FPU, but all of those are looking for a considerably faster processor, be that the 040 or more likely the 060. But even though we do have the faster FPU in here now, well, the FPU itself is not going to be used while the demo is running. It's only being used now when it's loading and pre-calculating the scenes that we're going to see in a second. So that's it. Pretty simple project, wasn't it? Just drop that crystal in, wire it up, and away it went. Our FPU is now running at its rated 40 megahertz, and I can once again use my Amiga 1200 happy, knowing that everything is in there working the way it's meant to be. I don't really know why the 54 megahertz clock signal didn't work. In the comments of the previous video, some people reckon that perhaps the FPU was missing some of the clock edges from that faster clock signal, or perhaps it just does not like running beyond 40 megahertz. And being fed a faster clock signal of 54, well, that was just screwing things up. Unfortunately, my oscilloscope won't read those frequencies or anything close to those frequencies. It dies after just a couple of megahertz. So. We had no way of really testing it to find out why it wasn't working. We'll just have to make that assumption, but I'm happy that it now is working at the 40 megahertz. That's what it's rated at anyway. And so let's just leave it in there doing what it can. Not that there is much use for it these days, to be honest. Yes, you can still run a lot of the old 3D animation software, things like that, ray tracing, things like that. But um, it's not something that I personally would be interested in doing. But as I say, I'm happy that I've got it in there now running at its rated clock speed. And so that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed what you've seen. If you did, I would appreciate a big thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG. And I'll see you next time.